Before free agency even commenced, we pretty much knew that the Vegas Golden Knights were looking to potentially send one of their netminders elsewhere, due to cap space constraints. As Elliot Friedman reported that the Knights entertained sending Robin Lanner to New Jersey or Marc-Andre Fleury to Chicago. Well, as we all know now, the latter scenario has now become reality. So, in this video, I'm going to give some background on the situation first and then give my thoughts and opinions on it. And with that, here is how the Vegas Golden Knights disrespected Marc-Andre Fleury. It's the summer of 2017, and Las Vegas is set to get an NHL team for the very first time. Therefore, as the rules dictated, each and every of the other 30 franchises had to give one of their own during the expansion draft. Now, it was a known fact that Pittsburgh had a crowded crease shortly after winning championships in back-to-back -back fashion. Therefore, all of the signs were pointing to one of the netminders in either Marc-Andre Fleury or Matt Murray being selected. The curveball here was Fleury to go to Vegas would have to waive his no-move clause and give up a life that he had known in Pittsburgh for over a decade. A fan base, a team, and a city that had all embraced him and had grown to love him as a player, but most importantly, a person. In order to help the Knights begin their quest for relevancy amongst spectators, Fleury willingly made a very huge adjustment while uprooting his young family and moving thousands of miles across the continent. The adjustment period for the newly minted team of, of misfits was seemingly non-existent in the first season. Although tragedy did surface, which aided Fleury and his new team in empowering the city, as they were given a newly founded purpose. And under the hashtag VegasStrong, Fleury and the Knights did the unthinkable, what many deemed impossible, by becoming the first expansion team in the history of the four major sports in North America to make it to the championship round. And ever since this accomplishment, for the five years of its existence, the team has never missed the postseason. Despite having a tougher season last campaign after overcoming the loss of his father Andre, the netminder was determined to bounce back as the 2020-2021 season approached. And in the latter part of his career, at 36 years of age for the majority of the season, the flower quickly began turning heads and attracting the spotlight as he went on to have his very best season since joining the league in 2003. As for the very first time, number 29 ended up finishing with a below two goals against against average with a 1.98, and simultaneously, the highest save percentage at .928 that he's ever recorded. While doing so, he also passed Ed Belfour and Roberto Luongo up and became the goaltender with the third most wins in NHL history, only behind Patrick Waugh and Martin Brodeur, as he currently sets with eight shy of 500 to his name. But besides breaking records league-wide, the Flowers set a new one of his own as well, as this season brought him his very first individual award in the Vesna Trophy along with the Jennings he acquired with Robin Leonard's aid. Despite giving his all to the city and bringing so much to the team on and off the ice with his presence, Mark Andre Fleury, according to his agent Alan Walsh, found out that he was traded from sources outside of the Vegas Golden Knights administration to the Chicago Blackhawks, a team that is currently being investigated for sexual assault allegations. This was not only done without his knowing, but also after owner Bill Foley had reportedly told the netminder that he would make sure he retired as a Golden Knight. After everything began to settle and the news circulated, it was then apparent that Vegas had also traded enforcer Ryan Reeves to the New York Rangers. A lesser value was given to Chicago in bringing in Flurry as they sent a minor league forward in Mikhail, who has yet to make his initial debut, to Sin City. A player that was previously selected in the fifth round. And yes, hockey is a business. The main incentive and motivation at the NHL level is purely financial. I get that. But this is a future Hall of Famer. A player with a personality that doesn't come along very often. A goalie with three Stanley Cups under his belt. The trade itself, not only just how they went about it, but the trade itself, considering the value they got back for Fleury says in my mind how much the ownership valued him, or rather what they saw him as. As in, he wasn't worthy of going out with dignity and respect. Sure, he made some mistakes last postseason, as every goalie eventually does, but this was a player that was already tossed out of Pittsburgh, and has to waive his no-move clause after an up-and-comer ran him out of his own crease that he had been manning for over a decade. So tell me, how in the name of all things hockey was this professional at all? One thing's for certain, I hope that Flurry doesn't retire like this and that somehow, in some way, he can win one more Stanley Cup with a team not named the Vegas Golden Knights. That is what he truly deserves along with the appreciation.